You guys are amazing. All right, cool. I'm going to look into the camera. Hello, online audience. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for being a part of our church, even from a distance. Uh, I truly appreciate hearing from you, talking to you. Some of you guys email me, tell me little stories. Uh, you can co connect to us if you've never done that. You can connect uh, to our website, churchontherock.net. Hit contact us and let us know you, that you're watching and where from. Sometimes I'll give shout outs like to Australia or wherever you might be uh, up there in Wisconsin. I know we got a lot of snowbirds that watch and listen from there. And so I just appreciate you guys uh, who just tune in from a distance. Last time I'm asking you to cheer, would you just give it up for the online audience? Welcome them in. Good to have you. It's awesome to have you. All right, so today uh, you have a worship guide. Pastor Derek mentioned that earlier. There's a note insert inside of there. Today I want to talk uh, a little bit about fasting, uh, which is not the most exciting topic. I, I get it. Like, I really understand. I run an incredible risk to underwhelm you today. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about fasting, and, and here's why. Seven days from today, we will be starting our season of 21 days of prayer and fasting at our church. This is a very, uh, very sacred time in our church. This is something that's very meaningful to us. We take it very seriously. Uh, and so every single year, we set aside 21 days to pray and fast. Uh, we do that in January. And then in August, we always come back to another season of 21 days of prayer. We call that one prayer and feasting. Come on, amen, somebody. Uh, we, we don't necessarily put away uh, food or anything like that. Uh, but, it, but in January, we always start with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And I'm going to say this right out of the gate, all right? So if you're like kicking the tires about making this your church home, or uh, if, if you're newer or whatever, never done a season of prayer and fasting, here's, you got to hear me say this first, that I will never, ever, ever tell you what to fast. That is not my job. I cannot do that. I will simply encourage you to go before the Lord, ask him what you could give up what you could sacrifice for 21 days. I recognize a lot of things. There's like all the fine print. You ever watch the commercials and they advertise something and then they rattle off all the disclaimers really, really fast at the end? I'm not going to do all that today except to say that I recognize some things like people have some legitimate, true health uh, issues that you need to be consulting doctors about before you make decisions on what you can or cannot Give up. Everybody hear that? I, I just think it's wise. I think that we should follow the counsel of the amazing people that have, that have spent a lot of their time and energy and resources to learn how to help us stay healthy. And so I, I'm not the guy that's going to say, trust Jesus, not the doctor. Like, trust Jesus and your doctor. They're both really helpful. Um, and so I would encourage that. Uh, I am not telling you not to eat at all. There are all kinds of different ways to fast. Um, you can, uh, I, let me, I don't see my, my guy to confirm. There he is, Derek. Derek, do we, have, do we have resources online, links and stuff? to? Yeah, good. So you can go, thank you. I told you I know less than you think. Uh, you can go to our website, churchontherock.net, and it, it'll, it'll talk to you a little bit about the ways, like different types of fast different ways you can fast. So there's, there's like limited diets and you can give up a meal a day or give up a, a delicacy, like whatever. You guys hear me? Like, I don't want to do the long commercial thing. I just, here's what I always ask our church to do is sacrifice before God. Sacrifice. In fact, this is what I tell our staff because they don't get a choice. <laughs> Amen. I tell the staff, like, I'm not telling you what to fast either, but here's what I am going to say. If it doesn't hurt, it's not your best. It's not, if, it's, if it's not painful, if it's not difficult, if it's not hard, uh, then I don't think it's your best sacrifice. And so I always ask our staff, uh, and I could certainly hold them to a little bit of a higher uh, level of accountability, but I always say, look, I just want you to give God your very best. And I, and it, and I feel like that should, that should hurt some. And when we, we go into seasons of fasting, your head is going to ache, and you're going to be more tired, and you have all the same expectations and all the same demands and all the same stuff going on in life. None of that quits, but all of a sudden, you, your, your energy is less because you're taking in less. It's just a little bit harder, but I want to talk to you today a little bit about it and a little bit about why perhaps we, we might do it because we're heading into a new year. Everybody likes new starts and new things, and so I'm encouraging you uh, to just maybe do something you've never done before. Jesus talked about fasting, and he never said, like, if you decide to. He said it more like this. Check it out with me in Matthew. He said, when you fast. So when you fast. In fact, if you, if you were to read Matthew chapter 6, uh, you would see that he, he hits a few things, like when you do this, like when you give, when you fast. He, he didn't really like present it like, hey, uh, if, if you consider this or if you decide to do it. It was just more like, hey, Christian, this is stuff we do. It, it's, like, it's, it's almost as if he said it that way. This is just stuff Christians do. So when you fast, 
Don't look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Come on, you ever, you ever done that? You ever been like, oh, man, I got this headache because I haven't eaten in like two hours. <laughs> I've been fasting since breakfast. <laughs> Come on. He says, truly, <laughs> truly, I tell you that they have received their reward in full. And in, in other words, like that's all you're going to get. If you're doing it to get the like, oh, wow, you're so sacrificial, man, you're crazy, holy, like that's all you get. That's the re reward if that's the heart behind it. Verse 17, but here he says it again, but when you fast, he says, put, put oil on your head. Of course, he's talking about before, uh, you know, you, you had uh, uh, showers and running water in your house, but put oil on your head and wash your face, like clean up, clean up, uh, make, make yourself look presentable so that it will not be obvious to others that you're fasting. But only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret. Watch what he does. He rewards you. He rewards people who do the things that God's people are called to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I want to say this, that fasting doesn't give us like this special favor with God. It's, it's not like trickery, like, oh, if I do this little, if I do this little trick... It, then, then God will then bless me. It's just that when we do the things that God calls us to do, it really just opens us up to receive the favor God offers. And one of the things that God asks the church to do is to fast. And I think the big question is why? And again, I'm going to answer that pretty quickly. Like, why on earth would I ever go without food? Uh, th there's something about our God that loves sacrifice, he loves it. In fact, the Bible's full of many, many scriptures that talks about how uh, burning flesh is like a sweet aroma into the nostrils of God, which doesn't um, appeal to my nostrils at all. You ever, you ever started a fire and singed the hairs off your hand, guys? Where y'all at, right? You ever tried to do something like amazing? You know what I mean? Like, this is going to be awesome, and then it blows up in your face. Come on, right? And, and your eyebrows are gone or whatever. And if you smell that, uh, it does not smell good, but for some reason in the nostrils of God, there's something about sacrifice. And, and I don't think literally, I don't think he actually literally likes the smell of burning flesh. I think he likes the smell of sacrifice before him. And there's something about it when I, when I put my flesh on the side and I willfully put it in a place of sacrifice, and then I willfully pour into my spirit because the Bible tells us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so listen to me, Christian, Christ follower, especially listen to me if you're new in this journey of faith, over and over and over again, day after day, week after week, throughout your entire journey of faith, repeatedly, we have to put our flesh to the side and follow what the Spirit is leading us to do. Say amen right there. We just do. So there, there are all kinds of draws and pulls against our flesh, constantly pulling us into worldliness and away from the heart of God that we constantly have to be at battle with to fight for the strength of our spirit. Because I'm telling you right now, if I just did everything I felt like doing or the first thought that always came into my mind, if, if I was just reactionary as a person, you wouldn't have me as a pastor. You'd be really embarrassed by me. You, you know what I'm saying? Because, because I, have, I have the same natural fleshly tendencies as anybody else bad temper. I have, I have tendencies to, to have wandering eyes or to have terrible thoughts like because I'm human. Come on, right? Like I don't want this to scare you. I just have a flesh that pulls me toward, toward worldliness, but I have the spirit that is strong enough to sustain me and get my flesh in alignment with God's will and God's heart. Amen. And so what, what does fasting do? It's like training. It's just training that, you know what, for me, in order for me to survive all the attacks that I know I'm going to go through, I need to just be trained. I need to be ready. It's like a basketball player working on his dribble or working on a shot, a golfer perfecting their swing. I have some friends that actually played some professional golf, and they said, hey, if any time you change your stroke, uh, you should hit that ball with that stroke a thousand times in order for it to become like a muscle memory thing. Fighters, they, they work on their swing, their head movement, ducking, and all that kind of stuff. Grapplers. I mean, what I can go on and on and on, whatever it is, that I have to train myself. A soldier should be trained for combat. Come on, right? And so fasting for us is like a season of training. That I just need to put, I need to willfully put myself in a position where I'm saying no to something my flesh really desires so that I can say yes to something that my spirit needs. And so if you are, are putting your flesh 
to the side, but you are not filling your spirit, you're going hungry, and it's pointless. <laughs> but like, it, what, what I should do, let's just say, for example, you're going to put away, let's just say for 21 days, you're not having lunch, all right? I'm, I'm not going to eat lunch for 21 days. I, I think that would be a great sacrifice. Uh, for some of you, that would be complete horrible torture, and I get it, right? So God, for 21 straight days, no lunch for me. So during that lunch time that I normally would be feeding my flesh, instead, I'm going to get myself in a position in a posture where I'll feed my spirit. So I'll spend that time reading the word. I'll spend that time in prayer. I'll spend that time, God, just trying to ask you to fill my spirit so I've substituted one for the other. Am I making sense? I know this isn't exciting. Uh, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to help some things make sense. And so for me, like why, the question is, why would I do it? Because all throughout my journey of faith, my flesh is always going to pull against the desire of God. And so I'm going to train myself to put it on the side and feed my spirit. That's, that's a quick why behind fasting. But I want to take you to, to Isaiah uh, chapter 58. This is a pretty popular verse about fasting. Uh, I'm going to give you the context really quickly. Is that God is responding here. Uh, we're going to start in verse 6. But God is responding because people are asking God, how come you're not moving? How come you're not answering? How come you're not doing great things for us because we're calling on you and we're fasting? Uh, back then, uh, if, if you've ever seen in the Bible this term sackcloth and ash, uh, they wouldn't bathe. They would put on uh, like, a, like a croaker sack that oysters come in. Come on, how many of you guys like oysters? Where y'all at, right? Like, one of the, like they would wear that kind of stuff because it, it was rough and uncomfortable. Uh, they would put ashes on themselves. Like they would really discomfort their flesh in, in a lot of ways in a season of fasting. And so uh, he's responding by saying, listen, it's because you're not really doing it with the right heart. You're really pursuing me for all the wrong reasons. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm just speak for myself that I, if I'm not careful, I can catch myself pursuing God for all the wrong reasons. In fact, in the book of James, in the New Testament of your Bible, it, it talks about how sometimes our prayers don't get answered because we ask, and the Bible says it this way, you ask amiss because you ask to spend it on your own desires. Like really, the, the, the common denominator of your heart is just in the wrong spot. You have the wrong concept. And so this is why your prayer isn't getting answered. And so they're asking like, God, what is going on? How come you're not moving? We're fasting. We're wearing all this stuff. And he just responds uh, it, he, about fasting. Is not this the kind of fasting that I have chosen, that God has chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke? Watch this now. I want you to key in on this. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. He's, he's asking, like, is this not what I want to see happening during fasting? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide uh, the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Watch what he says in verse 8. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will come quickly. Uh, it, it will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Watch this. Then, then, then you will call and the Lord will answer you will cry for help, and he will say, here am I. Like, here I am. So I'm just going to give you three simple things that I see uh, in this text, because here, here's, here's what I believe. I believe that heading into these 21 days of prayer and fasting for 2020, this, um, this is what I believe. This is what I feel like God has been communicating to me for weeks on end, that I believe that God wants to give our church, which is you, supernatural breakthrough. Supernaturally. Supernaturally. Like beyond natural. Like only God can get the kind of credit for this kind of movement type of stuff in your life, in your story, in your circumstances, in your situation. I believe that God is calling us as a church to start thinking a little differently and to start looking to God to say, God, we're looking to you to do what only you can do. And so as we head into this season of 21 days of prayer and fasting, I want us to be the ones that are on the then side of the verse. Then your light will break forth. Then you will call on me and I'm going to answer you. It is then when you get it in the right place, in the right perspective, then I'm going to move in mighty ways. The first thing I see, just a couple things for you to write down 
is that we have to fast with the right motives, with the right motives. So, so it's easy for me to run into fasting with a list of things that I need God to do for me. All right, God, I'm going to fast now in exchange. Let me just kind of tell you how like my subconscious might work. All right, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw down a sacrifice, okay? This is my part of the bargain. And in exchange for my sacrifice, I'm going to need A, B, C, and D. And that's what I need, God. So we good? We good? And honestly, I've gone through 21 days, seasons of 21 days of prayer with an exchange heart. That God, this is what I need, so I'm going to lay it out there in front of you, and you, you just... You do your magic, all right? Move really strong for me. And then on the back side of that, if God hasn't moved, then, 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 then what's my, I've postured myself to be disappointed, right? So, so I intentionally aim in every way possible to go into my fast just with the right heart and the right motives, that God, I'm simply going to train my flesh to be submissive to the spiritual things that you're calling me to do. Father, I don't know what you want to do in me. But God, I just pray that you would do whatever it is that you want to do. Speak into my heart. Change my thinking. Change my life. Change, whatever it is, God, please, you just do your way. Father, my heart is to honor you. My heart is to sacrifice before you. And God, I just would like to open myself up for you to have your way in me. I'm encouraging you to grab this mindset as much as possible. Don't try to do an exchange with God. Don't make a deal. Just say, God, I'm going to do this because I love you, and then I want you to move in my heart. I want you, God, to do what you want to do in me. Yeah, making sense? I probably should have thought of some jokes to tell, just to lighten the atmosphere a little bit. Number, <laughs> number two, write this down. I probably should have. Uh, you know, he talks a lot in, the, in Isaiah 58 about serving others. He talks about, like, it, it, like, to set the captive free and to clothe people and to feed people. I want to encourage us, church, to find ways in these 21 days to really focus on serving others. So if, so it, an idea, it's just an idea, all right? Just an example is um, you would have gone to the fast food restaurant for lunch, but because you've decided that lunch is what you're giving up, you'll still go to the fast food place and you'll just hit the drive through window and you'll just roll up to the thing and be like, hey, how you doing? Uh, I just want to pay for the guy behind me. Awesome. Great. And roll out. Well, that seems insignificant. Listen, I'm just saying that maybe, maybe it's just a way to show the love and the blessing and the favor of God. Hey, just tell them that God loves them and, and somebody wanted them to know and drive off. Maybe it's that person that you see standing on the corner and you're frustrated because like, man, if you spend enough time, as much time, you know, working to get a job as you do standing on this corner, you know what? Maybe God just wants you to have a heart of compassion. Just bless that person with the lunch that you would have eaten. I, I don't know what it could be, right? I'm not trying to get on anybody's like, I'm not trying to stand on soapboxes or step on people's toes. I'm just simply saying that maybe God wants us to focus on serving others to, to do more, get outside uh, of, of yourself and God, what is it that I can do for others? Because again, in a season of fasting, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, especially if you've never done it before, you are going to become unbelievably aware of yourself, unbelievably aware of just how hungry you are and how much your head aches and how frustrated you are. And you're going to be like, Pastor Josh is an idiot. What a stupid idea. I can't believe, what are we even doing? I'm telling you right now, you're going to call me more names than you even thought possible in the next 21 days. Why would God ever ask us to do this? This is crazy. This doesn't make sense. And I'm telling you right now that when your flesh goes on that altar, your flesh starts to cry out for itself and it starts to think of itself. And if not careful, we'll land in this self-pity mode instead of a way that, man, God, what do you want me to do for someone else today? Father, how can I get away from me and out of myself to serve someone else? The Bible makes it clear that he's calling us to do for others, to do for others. I'm telling you right now, that's just the thematical truth throughout all of scripture. Listen to me carefully. God wants his people to serve others. Always, always, always. All right. And then number three, last one. We're almost done. Some of you guys are like, thank God. Uh, <laughs> number three, I believe that that's when we experience breakthrough. That's when we experience breakthrough. When the motives are right. When the attention is in the right place, and then we experience breakthrough. And I've already said that I believe that God wants to do some supernatural things in us in these 21 days. And here's what I want to say to you, church, is I want you to begin, even now, to believe for it. To begin to just say, God, I need you to do what I could never do for myself, what I could never do on my own. 
I want to tell a story, and I'm always conflicted about telling stories because I feel like most of the time, like two-thirds of the church is like, ah, here we go again. Josh, we've heard this thing like 18 times. Seriously, bro? I don't know. That's how I feel. Uh, and I have told this story before. But it's been, I don't know, a couple of years, I guess. And so I want to just share it with you again. Oftentimes, this is where, this is where half the church is going to roll their eyes right here, is that I, 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 on, on services like these, I always go back to the first fast that I ever did. That, there you go. I roll. Go. Good. Uh, I always go back to that one because of the profound impact it had on my life. It was the first one. And, I, and what God did in me was... It just changed me forever. I, I don't know how else to say it. It changed my life, my whole life. I didn't want to do it. I, I wrote it off and said, no, I'm not doing it. And then my wife was like, I'm going to do it. And then I'm like, crap. I don't know if I should say that on Sunday, but I guess I'm going to do it too. You know, I'm, I don't want to eat hamburgers while you're having hummus or whatever nasty Daniel fast food you're going to have. I'll do it too. I mean, that was my whole heart. It really was. I was not interested in, in accepting a challenge to fast, but I did. I did anyway. And here's why I did it. Now, you, you could be in a totally different place, but here's why I did it. Because I was in a place in my life that I knew there was more. I knew there was more because I had experienced more. So I grew up in church. I've been in atmospheres like these all of my life. And God had already used me. I had already been uh, active in ministry, uh, served, and whatever. And, and I was just at this season of my life where I was kind of slumped. And I was, some of you are going to understand this and some of you are not, but I was sort of one foot in the church and one foot out of the church. And I don't mean like Sunday attendance. I just mean like maybe I was like halfway into God. And so I knew, like, all right, I know there's more, and this sort of one foot in, one foot out thing isn't working. This is not, I was totally, it's the most unfulfilled way to live ever. And I just like, fine. Honestly, that was my, that was my heart. Fine. I'll do it. I'll do it. And so I just went before the Lord, and I, I want to get to my point, but I just went before the Lord, and I just, I had a time of prayer before the fast even began, and I just simply said, okay, God. I'm going to honor you. So if I do this, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm going to suck it up and fight through all the, you know, whatever, frustration of it, and I'm just going to do it. And that's it. That, that, that was my prayer. I'll just simply honor you. I had no idea what he was going to do in me. Oh, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. The things that he did. I'm talking about radically shifted my heart, pointed me back toward ministry. That's not the point. There's one point that I, that I want to share, and I've, and I've shared it before, but I had this uh, very, very unhealthy habit in my life. It's going to gross some of you out, but I dipped uh, like snuff I know. I'm a real country boy. I know that my white shoes don't necessarily sell that to you. Um, but if you walked out in the parking lot and saw my truck right now, you'd be like, yeah, that's a country boy, big time right there. Um, and so I had, you know, the, you know, the little cans, a dip, I, would, I dipped. And so uh, for years, like for 10 years of my life, as soon as I started driving, I started dipping for whatever reason. You know, I had the gross spit bottles and all that, you know, the whole thing. And, uh, and so during this fast, I'm going to tell you right now, like, I never planned to quit. My plan was not to quit dipping. My plan was to stop dipping for 21 days. So I took my can of dip, I stuck it in my freezer. It stays fresher there. <laughs> and, and, and I did, I stuck it in my freezer. Because on day 22... My game plan was to get that thing out, throw it in my lunchbox to go to work, like I always did. And so I go through this whole 21 days of prayer and fasting. And, and here, here's the thing, though. Uh, prior to this, I'd always told myself I wasn't addicted. 
Like, I'm not addicted because I, would, I could stop for months at a time or whatever, but typically hunting season would roll around, get out there in the woods, start kicking it with the boys. It always starts with like, well, let me get one, let me get a dip, you know, and then you don't want to be the moocher, so I better go get my own, come on, right, anybody, I hope this is resonating with somebody. A lot of you city slickers are annoyed with me right now, just stay with me, okay? And so I never intended to quit, and, but I had told myself, like, I'm really not addicted because I, I can go long stretches of time without doing it, but I always seem to kind of pick it back up, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess by this point in my life, uh, I, it, it had me more than I really thought it did because I went through the whole, like, withdrawal, like, thing. Like, say one more thing. Say it. Say it. Like, I did that for a few days. I was irritable and... I had cravings like crazy, and inside I'm like, gosh, man, like I, didn't, like, I just didn't recognize uh, the, really the hold it had on me. And so I you know, fight through about, uh, about 10 days of that, where it was just not cool and push on through whatever. And so let me get to day 22. So the, the fast is over. And I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. We're working out in Gainesville. Uh, every day we would drive out there. And I wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I get dressed. I grab my lunchbox. I open up the freezer. I grab my can of dip. I throw it right in my lunchbox and hit the road. It's day 22. I'm free, baby. I'm free. And so all the way to Gainesville that morning, I was like really had this sort of inner sort of thing going on in my mind. Like there was this fight happening. Because on one side of my mind, it was like, Hey, you're free, man. You, you can pack it up, you know, if you want to, do whatever you like. You're free. But then on the other side of my mind, I was like, yeah, but man, like, I just went through those 10 days of being frustrated and this and that. Like, I'm feeling like, okay, I'm not having cravings like I was. So, like, y'all ever been there? Like, I'm just sort of on both sides of my head for back and forth, back and forth. Like, I don't really know. I don't really know. And the guy that I was working with, he made fun of me the whole time because I was, we were doing a Daniel fast and I was eating like bird food. It was crazy. And he'd pick on my lunch every single day because it was odd and awkward. And anyway, and so he knew, uh, he called it my quick too, which was hilarious. It wasn't a fast. It was a quick and, uh, which is funny. Anyway, that has nothing to do with my point. And so it's freezing cold in Gainesville. Um, we're having lunch. We're sitting in the truck. And, my, and I haven't had a dip all morning on day 22 because I've had this like thing going on in my head. And then like, we get done eating. And come on, like if you've ever had a nicotine deal, like when you're done eating, that's kind of the time. Like that's the, like, the peak moment, you know. I just vape now. It's no big deal. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> Sorry. <baby. laughs> Oh, jeez. I don't know what's wrong with me. So, <laughs> I don't vape. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> crack myself up. So, uh, I, get, I get done eating, and I look at my buddy, and I was like, man, I really want to dip. And he was like, get you one. The quick is over. Get one. And so I reached into my lunchbox, and I grabbed it, and I opened it up. You know, I'm looking at it, and I'm still like this thing in my head, like, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, and I just rolled down the window of the work truck, and I just dumped it out. And so here's, here's what I want you to hear me say. I think right there, it was right there that I think supernatural breakthrough happened for me. Supernatural breakthrough. Because until that moment, there was a pull on my flesh to come back until that moment. Like, it was like this pull, like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I was like, I don't really know, I don't really know. And I just dumped that can on the ground, which for me was sacrificial because, like, I had honored God for 21 days. And my, my little contract, my right motive, right, was that, hey, I'm free. I did my part of the deal. But when I turned that can over and that stuff hit the ground, I think God did something for me. And he took, he took, what he did is he took out of me a desire for that. Because used to, I'd smell it, you know, the, oh, my God, that smells so good. Or I would see a friend with it, and I'd be like, oh, man, you know, I'd get that, 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 that pull on my flesh. Come on back, come on back. But in that moment, I think God set me free. 
Because I'm telling you right now, that was, I don't even know, that was years, I don't even know how many years ago. It was a long time ago. I've never, ever, since that moment, even had a desire, a thought. Now, like I see my friends at, or, or you know, whatever, people that do, and I'm just like, now, I'm glad that I don't have that going on. You know, I'll see like the spit bottle and a cup holder in my buddy's truck out in the woods, and I'll be like, that is nasty. Come on, right? Like, ah, you know? And so something shifted on the inside of me. Why, pastor, would you take all the time to tell us this story? Because listen to me carefully. I think that God has a way of giving people breakthrough. I set out at the start of a fast and just said, I don't even want to do this, but I will honor you. I never said, I want to quit dipping. Never once was it an idea, a motive, a thought. I didn't even pray for that. One time. But God was saying, I got something for you, son. And here's what I know, here's what I know, that some of you are sitting in that very chair, listening to the podcast, watching this online, whatever it is, and you're saying, there must be more. I knew there was more, you're hoping there's more, and I just want to be a, a living example to tell you that there absolutely is More. That God wants to give you, and there's more that God wants to set you free from. There's more. And so if you're on the fence, and you're like, I don't know about this whole deal, I'm challenging you. I, I do this every year. I'm challenging you. Do it the way I did it. Just say, fine. Fine. Whatever. And then go before God and say, God, I'll honor you. I'll just honor you, and I'll do this right. Whatever you call me to put away, I'm going to put it away. And then here's what I'm going to say. Just watch what God will do. Watch and see what God will do. I will wager all I have, all I have for you to take a challenge because I believe that God will meet you, and I believe he'll do more than you even thought possible. Because listen to me, sometimes God just wants to do the supernatural. And my effort and my strength and my discipline and my willpower and my choices are irrelevant to what he wants to give me. And sometimes they're irrelevant to what he wants to take away from me. It really is. And so I challenge you this morning, church. I challenge you. Go before God. Take the next seven days and start praying. God, what would you have me sacrifice? God, what do you want me to do? What is it that you're calling me to? And then make that commitment starting next Sunday and say, all right, for 21 days, God, I'll honor you and watch what God will do. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed. I told you we're almost done. Let me finish. Let me finish. I talked longer than I expected. But I believe that there <clears throat> is the potential that, that perhaps you're in this room or even listening to this <clears throat> message and you're not a Christian. You're not a Christ follower. You've never said, yes, God, I will walk with you. Jesus, come into my life. I'm going to start a journey of faith. Well, if you are here this morning and that is you, I want to invite you to make that decision. Because I'm telling you right now, just inviting Christ into your heart is a supernatural thing. It is a true miracle that we are born again into a new family, that we are seen through the blood of Jesus that we are considered sons and daughters of God Almighty. We have a place. We have a name. We're given authority. We're given power. We belong to an eternal family. And if that's you, I just want to invite you to make that decision. I want to invite you to step into that relationship with Jesus. And to do that, I just want to lead you in a very simple prayer. It's very, very simple. I'm going to say all the words and just ask you to repeat them after me. Church family, you know how we do it. I always ask everybody in the room to say it with me, even if you've said it before, because I believe that there's the potential that somebody will be saying it today for the very first time. So here's what I want you to say. I want you to say, Dear Jesus, I give you my life, all of it. Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. Make me new. All that I am is yours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let's give God praise for those that made that decision.